case you're wondering what a supernatural army looks like, watch this. As sure as God helps us, we will not give up, we will not cave in, we will not quit, we will not fail, we will not fear, we will not die until our job is done and victory is won. We are the new and we love this child. One key thing for me would be the love and the warmth in the new. Um, I remember somebody posting something on her status and she was basically ranting about the fact that people don't give enough hugs. And I'm like, have you been to the new? The new is not a church, it's a community. It's a church built with love. The new is a child born in due season for the fulfillment of the purpose of God where generation is concerned. The vision remains, raise me a supernatural honey. Praying every Friday for 18 weeks was mind-blowing. We would come every Friday for eight hours and pray and pray and pray. There was a vision that Piers has you know, casted to us. Uh, Piers, of course, if you know him very well, you know he can cast a vision to anybody. He used to say it, that I can cast a vision to anybody and you will buy it. One day Piers just walks up to me and funny enough, we didn't used to talk much then. We we're just members of the same church, right? And then he walks up to me and he says, um, something is starting. There is something exciting that um, we're doing, we're about to start and I'd like you to be a part of it. I didn't know what it was at the time, you know, and there's this thing that they say you come for the curiosity, but then you stay for the experience, you stay for the life transforming experience. I was just curious at the time. Okay, so what's this big thing? What's this next thing that is starting? Pastor Shola had told me to just stop by at some point. And uh, I remember what he was wearing. He was wearing this, uh, I think it's uh, a, a one piece. Um, it's. Uh, it's very creative this way. I think he had Africa in front or something like Adire or so, or Ankara in front, and it was a plain one. I remember so vividly, and it was just those 15 people. And then um, he just invited me for a video one day. We got together, and then we started to, you know, pray. He he laid the vision, you know, very bare, you know, before us, you know, a church is starting and we have been sent to a generation, you know, a kind of people, you know, in the nations and all of that. It sounded fancy at the time, right? You know, maybe now that we are seeing it, that we're able to see reality, it is, you know, very beautiful to actually take in and imagine. But at the time, at least I can speak for myself, it didn't exactly, you know, seem like it. We were just 15, we were few. We were young. A lot of us at the time were, you know, people like me, we were just coming out of school. You know, a lot of us were still figuring life out. You know, what next? What are we doing? At the time, it didn't look possible in that sense because, I mean, 15 of us in this small place, you know, but we kept saying it, we kept praying, we kept declaring it, you know, every single Friday for 18 weeks. During those meetings, peers would tell us, uh, people are coming from every part of the world, you know, let's point to the different um, um, four cardinals of the earth, to the north, to the east, to the west, to the south, let's call for that people. There are a kind of people, you know, we're sent to a generation of people. Yes, we say pray and comfort people from the nations, comfort names, you know, face the east, face the west, face this side. And then in our small room where we used to pray at the time, you know, different people would just, you know, face here, face there, and we begin to call names, right? So we call for Bola from this place. We call for Ada from this place. So if a Bola, Ada, just know that there are some people that actually prayed you out, right? Prayed you into the new. I remember what, what the things that we prayed for. We prayed for people. That was all we did. We prayed for people. We prayed for people with hurts. We prayed for people who are going through issues. We prayed for people who had something for their generation. Um, you know, and it struck my heart, I must be honest. It struck my heart. How could people come together? There were no personal prayers. It was just people. So we'll just come together, then we'll pray, we'll call forth names, and then after that, we'll sit down, we'll strategize, okay, what is the, you know, feel of church going to be like? What's the ambience going to be like? You know, what are the kind of people that we're looking to attract? What's our tone of voice going to be like? What is going to set us apart? What's going to be unique about the new? So it was at this point that we're now divided into groups. So you, you could sing, you joined 
you know the choir in that sense but like the group you know we didn't have a name yet and we deliberated on how we wanted to look and you know sound like there was careful curation on how we, we should sound like how we would look like of course the essence is not lost which is christ and the message of salvation but we, because of the kind of people we wanted to reach out to at that time this was like five years ago right so a, group, a good number of our people were just leaving school or maybe in school or young professionals you know young entrepreneurs one day I was just, you know, praying. I was thinking about it, like, what's the name of this church going to be called? What's the name of this church going to be called? And I remember it just dropped in my spirit, the new. I never saw my husband being a pastor. I'd seen that he was going to do ministry because when I met him, he was doing ministry. So I felt he was going to go along that line. When we were in school, he was the president of a dance group that I also belonged into. And we did more you know, ministry stuff than dance stuff, right? So I'd always felt that he would do ministry, but not necessarily be like five-fold called as a pastor, pastoring a church with people and all of those things, right? So I don't think I ever saw that happening, like being a pastor. It was, it was not even in the radar, like it wasn't anything worth thinking about. So I don't think so. I never saw it. I never, never saw it. <laughs> I didn't see it. When I was on campus, I literally used to tell people all around me that if there's anything God is going to do with my life, one thing I know is not going to do with my life is that I was never going to be a pastor. I was so sure to beat my chest to it that I could never, I would never, I shall never, I can never, whatever affirmation. I used to say that. I had two beautiful daughters before having him. And, uh, after the two daughters, the mom was so worried. Am I going to be having daughters? Because there's, there's that correlation between our own sibling. The mother has, she had uh, three, no, about four or five girls. So she was afraid that, ah, will this thing continue with me? Am I going to inherit that? So she was worried. So when she took him, she was so, so worried that she started praying to God to have a male child. Today, night vigil, tomorrow, the prayer program, God answered her prayers. But something happened. We were going for a prayer retreat in our church. And on the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, we had a terrible accident. And it was a somersault. Everybody was afraid. Afraid of him because he was still some months old. But as God will have it, no scratch, no nothing, everybody was fine. It was a miracle that he survived. I knew that he had that gift. Because when we were going to our church, it's a spiritual church, we have one young pastor, Pastor Ayo. Anytime that one ministers and give, that one will give uh, messages to people. The next thing he will do, hey, Junior, what did you see? And I said to him, what can this one see? And he will stand up and say, yes, I saw this, I saw that, I saw, ah, what can, <laughs> who are you, are you guys deceiving, deceiving yourself? So she, he will give messages and the man will confirm that, look, this is, I saw that too. I said, ah. I remember some of my most vivid memory of my upbringing was the fact that I used to have dreams, <laughs> dreams of the night in particular. I remember my mom would wake me up in the middle of the night sometimes, sometimes very early in the morning and say, did the Lord say anything? Why? Because I sort of had a track record of how my dreams always come to pass. 
And so that in mind, she was always very keen on me. Um, in fact, I remember that growing up, you know, she used to take me a lot for prayer meetings and to churches. You know, I remember that I, I used to go to the mountain with my mom. My mom used to go to, to the mountain top a lot. And my mom would take me from one, you know, church and we always go for meetings and services and all of that. It's very interesting that sometimes she wouldn't even take my sisters, you know, she would always just take me, you know, then. And then skip down all the way. Um, when I was 10, my, my mom passed and, um, you know, just gave me that room, you know, to do whatever I wanted to do. So after she passed, I was in the boarding house at the time, came back to Lagos. I went to um, Ijebude Grammar School. And then because she passed and there was nobody that was coming to see me, you know, um, you know, so I had to come back to Lagos. So I came back to Lagos and I joined a private secondary school right here um, in Lagos. And that was where my journey began. And what I mean by my journey, my journey on the other side. <laughs> and um, I remember that, you know, one of the very interesting experience, now my dad must not hear this, but it's the truth. There was a particular time, you know, I was suspended three times in a week, in the three weeks, in the period of, in the space of three weeks in my secondary school, because, you know, I could be well considered as one of the bad boys in school then. So the traces of being a boy child or a male child started showing its face in his uh, when he was growing up. <laughs> it was very, very challenging. At the point, I thought I've lost him to the devil because uh, it will, because there was no mom to really take care. So you will see him coming in, not talking to anybody, going to his room to just stay there. And you wonder, what are you doing in your room? Come out, everybody say, leave me, daddy, I'm okay. And the next thing he will go out from morning till in the evening. Well, I don't stay at home because of the nature of my work. So, I just well, well, I'll just try my best. After that experience, which is one of the most you know, powerful memories that I had, I was like that all the way till I was done with secondary school. And now when I was done with secondary school, my dad gave me the opportunity to either write jam or go all the way for my A-levels in, you know, um, SPS or in Lauren Yofa. And so, I, of course, the option was juicy. Get to write your A-level Cambridge. You have two options. You get into 200 level of a Nigerian university or you go out of Nigeria. Of course, everybody wants to get into 200 level instead of doing 100 level or go out of Nigeria. So I chose to go for the Cambridge A-levels. And then he told me about this school, which was um, the School of Preliminary Studies, SPS offer. And told me about the school and told me to go check it out on, online. And if I'm interested, I could go to write my A-levels, my Cambridge A-levels in that school. So, of course, I went online, checked the school out, and wow, I was blown. You know, it looked to me like, you know, I was going to Harvard, you know, it had all the aesthetic, the lights, the ambience, the hall, everything was looking really good online. And so, yeah, I would go to this school. And so I remember that, you know, I, I paid for the fees and my dad took me to school that day. I was very excited about it. Remember, this was me who would have, you know, you know, we would always sag and have my baggy jeans and have my chains and have my drag on with my baseball caps. <laughs> and so I went to the school this day. Guess what, guys? This is where the story gets very interesting. We drove into the campus and in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, was this the school I chose? <laughs> and the, 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 the hall wasn't looking like it, the walls weren't looking like it, the old school. In fact, I remember very vividly that as I was driving in, in my mind, I was thinking, I'm going to see very fine girls in this school. And then as we're driving in, the girls I was, I was seeing, they had barrettes on, <laughs> you know, they had long skirts. <clears throat> and I was thinking to myself, wait a minute, what's going on here? So I was thinking, okay, maybe when we go further down, we're going to see different kind of girls. I saw the guys, they were all looking innocent, you know, you know, with ties. And I was like, okay. So I got down from the car. My dad had dropped me there, got down from the car, we greeted each other, he left, you know, and I had my bags with me. And so I saw this guy, I walked up to him and said, hey, I just came to the school. He said, oh, welcome. He asked for my name. 
So I said, my name is Shola. So I said, oh, bra, Shola, welcome. At the moment I heard that bra, <laughs> it's like something just ringed on my mind. Like, what? Bra, what? <laughs> bra, Shola, you're welcome to the school. Da, 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 da. That's the way to the hostel. So I, I went to the hostel. In my mind, I'm still thinking, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm still going to find my kind of guy. So I guess what? I dressed, you know, in, in the legal like way of dressing. <laughs> and so we went to the, to the hostel with my bags there. As we got right into this hostel, they were asking me my name. What's your name? I said, my name is Shola. So, oh, you're welcome, Brashola. You're welcome, Brashola. And my man, I'm thinking, what on earth is going on here? How did I make my life down to this place? <laughs> then a guy comes to me. I remember his name. His name is Tunde. Came to me and says, you know, um, Brashola, in this school, we always have morning devotion every morning from 5 30 a.m to 6 30 a.m and we pray for one hour um and you know you're going to be expected to be there the next morning my man i'm thinking number one this school is owned by a muslim number two all of you have been boring me all along and nobody in this school looks like me so then next morning came i said okay i'm just going to go for this prayer meeting if you like do whatever you want to do that's a problem so we went um, the next morning they woke us up and then I stood at the right back and I was seeing all of them and I saw all of them praying that was the first time I saw like young people praying that way they were praying very fervently and let me, let me just tell you like I'm not talking about you know the God bless you kind of prayer it was like the head moving wearing holding kind of prayer so like what what's going on here yeah. the girls were on barrettes some of them had to use their air tie and things like that and so we finished the first prayer in my mind. I'm thinking, my goodness, God, what have I entered in this school today? And so that kept on over and over and over again. And um, gradually, I remember one day, um, the president of the fellowship came to me and said, you know, Brashala, you are the one that is going to take prayer the next morning. Now, so get ready. You're going to preach for 15 minutes. I'm going to lead prayer. All the many, I you know, lead ministers left. In my mind, I'm thinking to myself, okay, I'm going to lead prayer. So what did I do? I picked up the book. I remember I had this Gideon Bible. I mean, I'm sure you, you all have that Gideon Bible, the blue one. And I went to the book of Psalms and I started cramming, you know, <laughs> scriptures. Psalms 56. I was cramming the scriptures so that by the time, you know, um, <laughs> it's time for me to lead the prayer. You know, Gaima now. I was coming from a Gaimarism way of life. So, you know, they will not carry, I will not carry last year. And guess what? It was my turn to lead prayers that day. I was on stage. And then, voila, I couldn't remember a thing that I crammed, you know. And, um, you know, now, as a guy man, <laughs> then I quickly just changed it to John 3.16. Of course, that scripture, everybody knows it. And Psalms 23. And then I led prayers. And then, of course, I didn't think it was really good, even though they tried to pray respective. I was even wondering to myself, like, how come these people are still praying fervently on Psalms 23? <laughs> you know, but... The prayer was over, I went to the room and I felt really bad. I remember that day, I, I felt so bad, I felt embarrassed. And then I committed from that day forward that I was going to start reading the Bible. So I started reading the Bible. Of course, gradually, my dressing started to change, my countenance, my belief. I remember very vividly that, you know, um, around the school, there were places where people could go and pray, particularly from 6 p.m. all the way to the night. And so I started going to pray. We had this library where, you know, there were books from Kenyon and, you know, Egan and all of these Ayobabalala is very old, ancient, apostolic writers. And I got to start consuming those kinds of materials. In fact, the way they used to pray then, they didn't used to pray in tongues. They were praying in English in their own, you know, maybe English or Yoruba or Igbo or Hausa, whatever tribe they belonged to. And it was very, very intense. So they can pray in your understanding for one hour, two hour stretch, right? And that was the kind of training that I had because that was where I found myself. And I would join them in prayers. I became the head of drama department, you know, at the time. And it was like that, like that, like that. And I remember that I was about to write, we we're about to write the, the exam. And I felt that the Lord told me not to write the exam. And of course, this is my dad who had paid, you know, a lot of money for the exam and God told me not to write the exam. So I remember I went back home and told my dad that, dad, you know, I'm not writing the exam. And my dad was very cross, like, no way. What do you mean? After spending all this money. Why, why don't you want to do A-levels again? That will, 
make you to go to 200 levels and all what not. He said, no, I'm not doing it again. I said, okay, come. Oh boy, are you not understanding what you are taught? Or is this, he said, no, but they told me people don't pass a level easily. I said, ah, are you one, one of the people? Are you a people? He said, no. Well, when I saw that, it's not going to budge. I said, okay, no problem. Come back to Lagos. And when you come back, we'll be sitting down together now. Now, looking back, I know why God took me to that school because he, 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 he literally used that school to refine me. It was like me going through the refiner's fire through that school. One day my dad was coming back from work and then he brought this newspaper home and he said to me that, oh, do I know that OAU is doing pedigree? So I said, oh, okay. That, and he said to me that if you're interested, that you can actually apply for it or you can still write your, you know, UTME, which is JAM, and pass the JAM and enter into university. At the time, my first choice was, you know, Unilag and then OAU. But then when my dad showed me the newspaper, I said, okay, let me just go for this Obafemi Aono University's um, P degree. So I went, applied, wrote it, and then voila, I got into Obafemi Aolo University. Now, when I was 12 years old, my elder sister was a part of a fellowship group, and you know, a friend had invited her for this you know special conference that was going on in somewhere around Alagbado, you know, Dalimore area. And you know she had invited us to come for this conference. Shola was about 12 at the time. Um, we got introduced to Kingsward um, by a family friend of ours, and she introduced us to Kingsward in Dalimo at the time. And um, we used to go for their services on Sundays. But there was a particular event that they had, um, which Pastor K was invited to minister and we all went um, Shola as well went with us and that was when he encountered Pastor K for the first time then comes this man of God who they had said you know came all the way from Chicago I remember very vividly he was wearing a blue shirt a brown jacket a brown pant and a brown shoe and I saw this man preaching with so much vigor, so much strength, so much fervency. It was moving from one end of the pulpit to the another end of the pulpit. So I was very intrigued by him. I was just looking at him, you know, preaching with so much passion, you know. And I remember it was time for miracles. It was laying hands, healing the sick by the power of the Spirit. I went to the back. I was just stirring. I went out, came back at the age of 12, you know. And then seeing all of that, um, after the service, we went home and then, you know, I found out that the name of the church was King's Word Ministries International. And the name of that man of God, all the way from Chicago, was Reverend Kayode Ijicheson. So I met him at the age of 12, just had that picture, that image of him. Now, skip down to after passing OAU, um, P degree, I got into P degree. And I got into OAU then, and of course, I was looking for a church to join. And then there was Kingsword in OAU. I just remembered, wait, this was the same Kingsword I you went to when I was 12 years old. This is definitely the church of that man of God that was preaching with so much passion. And then I said, okay, I'll join the church. Now, this time when I was at SPS offer, you know, I, mem I remember I mentioned that the Lord had asked me not to write the exam. And I didn't write the exam, but the Lord had put it in my heart and said that the school I'm going to go to next, it was going to use me for something massive. And so I had that in my heart. And then I used to, you know, dance. I remember I mentioned that I was the head of the drama department. So I had that creative, artistic, you know, side of me. And so I got into OAU, um, P degree, and the Lord put in my heart to start a dance group. And that was how the word dance group started. I remember that, you know, I met some of the people who joined the dance group supernaturally. Meeting Pierce for me is probably one of the most incredible stories, you know, of my life. Um, having to meet somebody under a particular tree every single time, about three to four times, right? Um, and what were we talking about, you know, Grammys, Grammys, Grammys and Grammys? Because, I mean, I love the art, I love the entertainment, I love music, and it just felt like, you know, I had seen somebody, you know, we could connect on that level. I mean, it was very strange. I mean, I would say that when I properly met PS, I actually met him 
trying to accomplish a vision <laughs> you know very funny which is you know what most people know about him you know and then we just started the dance group and it was very interesting you know because we had so much passion so much fire you know it was built on prayer i remember that you know, one of the core things that i got from that school of preliminary studies was prayer so we always pray 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 it was almost like this was all the way as pedigree we we're just 16 years old at the time oh, many of us you know just 16 years old we we're fervent you know i remember that you know we, would, we even got an opportunity to travel to lagos to minister somewhere so we had all of those things going on and at the same time i was a member of king's world ministries international and i remember that we talk about the things we're going to do when we move into oau that's the dance group the great things we're going to do all the massive things we're going to do at that point we we're just very daring you know which is one of the things that you know uh, marks my mind about ps um we were just very daring just we just went all out i mean at that point in time everybody was there to read their books you know and just get on in life but um the pre-degree students barely, you know, knew too many things at that time. Um, I look back at all of those memories, right? Um, times when we, you know, still there in pre-degree, we had to, you know, do several videos. I remember a particular one that we did, you know, the whole team, you know, we're just very daring, ready to just go all out. We didn't know what exactly was driving us because we just felt, we just felt like we could conquer the world. You know, we just felt like we could do big things. And, you know, that was that was that was it for us. I remember a particular time, you know, um, this was towards the end of our pre degree. You know, myself and PS went to Amphitheater in um, OAU then. And boy, oh boy, I remember us going to the top of Amphi, getting inside. I mean, we're not students of, you know, Bafemi Awolo University by that time, but we went there. And, you know, I remember PS saying that, you know, we're going to come back here, you know, and do a show and it's going to be the biggest in OAU and boy did we or did we not do it and then we moved into OAU I got you know admission and got into a Bafemore University and then the experience went to another level of course we'll pray we'll go to the mountains in mountain to fast we'll pray we'll take tongue stroll you know to Mayfair take tongue stroll to the gates Sometimes we're just there praying for days, you know, fasting and praying. This is a very, very, very famous white wall. This place, my goodness, God, you know, in this place, destinies were shaped, destinies were transformed. This place was so, you know, pivotal to my life's journey. Um, I remember the word days then we'll come here, we'll pray, we'll fast, you know, we'll pace in tongues. You know, I remember very well that it was in this spot God started to show me about the future. I remember having a prophetic vision somewhere around this axis, a prophetic vision. I was facing the wall somewhere here. <laughs> this axis. I knelt down before God in prayer in this axis and I remember that God was showing me visions of nations ah no 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 in the sun in the rain you know come from class like that sometimes from class I just head straight down here just pray ah this is the place where you know we used to come and spend a lot of time to pray you see the way these chairs are <laughs> I remember, you know, this is the spot I used to, I used to come and preach, you know, I'll stay right here, the word people, all of them would have their chairs like this, sometimes they would stand, or sometimes we form a round circle, and I'll be preaching like this, yeah, you know, preaching two things, like I said, PP, power purpose. <laughs> I remember when I wanted to change my course from geology to psychology, and, um, I knew that I couldn't continue with geology. So I remember that I came here, particularly this place, this wall, you know, I came to pray, <laughs> you know, and I was, I was here just praying, just praying, just praying, you know, just, you know how we used to pray there and I'll be shaking our heads. <laughs> and then God, God told me to change my course. And that's how I changed my course. Even though my parents, my dad did not want me to, my sisters did not want me to. My boy just called me from Ife. 
Daddy, I want to change my course of study. Say, oh boy, oh boy, <laughs> is something. Ah, look, have you lost track that you can't follow through your education? First of all, A level, you said you don't want to do. Second, you want to do what? Okay, what do you want to do? I want to study psychology. I said, ah, I can now understand. So you can't fit in again in. So you, 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 he said, no, you see, not that. Look, as I was probably, he just called the phone. I'll call you back. My son did not call me back home. But um, since I heard God here, yeah, I decided to do what God wanted me to do. And I'm grateful to God that I did it. See your house. Where you grew up. <laughs> this is the, the, the bakery. This bakery. Bakery. <laughs> this was the bakery. As in, ah, if you go touch that wall, that place will be hot. It's fire. And that fire, the fire and that place will still be on the wall. As in, yeah. uh, those days, 20, ah, uh, 15 of us. Ah, no, 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 no. Things happen in this place. As in, we should, we should buy this place. As Honestly. As we should just I buy it. I just keep it. See the house. See that See. girl. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this room. This room. This small room. This small room. This small room. We will lock ourselves there. We will be there. We will pray. We will this. We will plan. We will ah. Man, this is our location. As in the tongues, the kind of tongues that was coming out from this place. I'm telling Heavy. you. Heavy. That, that supernatural drive. Hey, supernatural! Oh, that no, night. That was the last try. <laughs> that you remember that night now. <laughs> that tongues. Ah, no, I, <laughs> now, as in things were not moving. Me and Solar just attack and say, "We they come." <laughs> 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 no, no, no. Of course, uh, they, they come. <laughs> Shapa takato <laughs> kopara kata. Porokos kepeletai. <laughs> <laughs> Blasted to us so as it go by like this. That, this began to open. As it, so I can't forget that night. Oh, no, I can't, no, no, I can't no, no. forget that night. So oh my. Amazing. I remember this powerful story that happened. You know, we had gone for a retreat in Obafemi Awolowo University. And then this day I was teaching on the, the three dimensions of power. Peers are started talking about you know power and you know t talking about thunder and lightning and all of that and all of a sudden i mean this was in Opa, somewhere in um, ife and we we're praying and all of a sudden we started hearing thunder strikes you know all over i mean i've seen things but that that particular one you know seeing hailstones drop right there in that compound you know we came in here and as we came out you know it was guess what was going on as we all came out, you know, there was in this, right in this place, as we came out, we're praying, we're charged up in prayer, right in this place, every other place was sunny, but right in this place, just this place alone, it was raining hailstone. That was the very first time that I was seeing hailstone live. You know, the power of God was, it was, it was so supernatural like we, I've never seen it before. You know, so right in this place, and all of my the members of the, the world at the time, you know, were picking it up from the floor. And it was just on this place, like it was not anywhere else. The clouds were so thick, you know, while I was ministering, it was so dark in this axis, and it was raining right in this place. And that was one of the biggest manifestations of God's power. I believe very strongly that, you know, that, that, that launched me into a dimension of power that I've never experienced until that time. We saw some dimension of God power, raw power. I remember in the world then when we were dancing, we get people, we get testimonies of people healed. You know, we get testimonies of people falling out of power while we're ministering. It was so powerful. The anointing of God was so strong and it was just 15, I think we we're 15 of us then in the world today. It was so powerful. We we're literally changing the campus. We, we had a concept called Supernatural Act and we, you know, executed what I'll call the, 
the biggest show actually biggest dance show um in Ife at that time i mean when you have to do one particular dance concert started from one venue and ending in another venue so we we did three venues on that same day starting off somewhere breaking you know from spot center to more me and then ending in amphitheater and you know all of the things that we said you know and, and it just took me back to that particular moment where we stood up there to say you know what well, we're coming back here and we did come back and you know it was very big was very massive so we were used to I would say that we're used to doing just crazy things. Um, or do do we want to talk about the you know um, everything that happened before that particular concert? You know, I remember that we even had issues getting the amphitheater in itself, and we were all determined like whatever it's going to take. This is where we did the supernatural act that we spoke about. This is the third venue. On the day, um, we had SUB car park, we had Moremi, and then we came all the way here, over five, over 5,000 people, you know, right in this place, and it was packed, you know, to the brim. We actually went around this building, which is amphitheater, and we prayed around Obathemel Law University campus, all of us, 20-something um, of us, the, the world members, and guess what? We came to this venue that day, a day before, and we laid hands on every single chair in this place, like every single slab. We went around, laid hands on everything. We went around the state, laid hands, and that anyone who came here, you know, would experience the power of God, would experience the tangibility of God's presence. And guess what? That was what happened. It got to a point at the show that day, we we're trying to tell people to stop worshiping. They couldn't stop because of the power of God that was so tangible. So. This is supernatural act. That's what you call audacity. <laughs> <laughs> time you know so that's what we're doing now we're finished supernatural act and it was it was all over the place now guess what happened a man of god who was the then director of operation of kings of missions international had come to the campus then and you know somebody told him another pastor in the ministry told him about this set of young people that are storming the campus just by dancing and he was very intrigued by that, you know, especially with the three venue concert that we did. And at this time, there was supposed to be a um, supernatural night of wonders in Lagos in King's Word. And so the pastor, the then, you know, director of operation, then told the pastor to invite us to come for it. So they had invited us, I think I was in my part three at the time when we did that concert. And so they, were, they had invited us to come all the way down to Lagos um, for this crusade. It was a crusade. I remember it was done at um, National Stadium you know um thousands of people were there so they had invited us so we drove all the way down to lagos um for this you know um, if, um crusade and so we got there and then here comes this man of god you know who that i met you know when i was 12 years old it was the you know chief host it was the one ministering that day dr k and so we we're going to minister before the choir after the choir and then we were supposed to be next and so the program changed and they asked us to go up and so we went up and it was phenomenal. The power of God was so strong. The anointing of God was so tangible. People were falling under the power. In fact, I remember that in the program, there was supposed to be the word, which was a dance group, and then the choir ministration. And by the time we we're done, there was no need for a choir ministration because they had, the anointing of God just enveloped the whole room. People were already standing up, worshiping God, crying, 
falls down on the power and then dr k comes off stage and then he just flowed and ministered in the holy spirit and taught the word and after that he invited us you know us all on stage prayed for us laid hands on us you know and that day he looked at me and said from today i adopt you as my son you know and all of that so that was the first experience that i had you know close proximity one-on-one -on -one with dr k dr k called me after the old ministration and said to me that you know god's hands on you guys you know just so give someone prophet, prophetic words and then he gave me his number and said don't give anybody my number i said yes sir so he gave me his number and that was the first connection that we had of course i went back to oau then um i didn't call him um because i didn't think that there was any need to call him went back continued to do what we were doing with the word you know destructing <laughs> who you campus with with dance god gave us such an influence on campus right there were so many great things that we did and there was this particular day i was going to um to pray in the night at night i think it was about 8 p.m i was walking down to um sports center to go pray and it just turned in my heart to call dr k so i picked up my phone and i said you know called him i said hello sir my name is shola i said shola who's shola <laughs> i said sir i was the one who came to minister you know um a supernatural night of wonder you gave me your number the dance group said oh, 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 oh how are you i said i'm very well and i just I'd, I'd heard that there was supposed to be another supernatural night of wonder and that was coming up and it was coming to to nigeria so i called him i said sir I know you are coming to Nigeria and um, I just want to serve you in any way that I can. I would just love to be amongst the protocol if you permit me. He said, oh, don't worry about that. You know, there are protocol assigned to me already. I said, okay, sir, I know. And I went out further to say, sir, if I can just even wash your clothes, if that's all I can do, I just want to be around you. And then he laughs and says, no, 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 no. There are protocol and people assigned to do all of that. I said, sir, I just want to be around you. Then after too much, you know, pushing from me, he said, okay, it's no problem. He gave me somebody's contact to call. And then, voila, he came to Nigeria, I think three weeks after. And then I was in Lagos. I remember I, I took a bus from Obafemina University then and went all the way down to Lagos with one black suit. I'm sure some of my friends would attest to that suit that I used to wear up and down there. And then I went to him and then I became his protocol officer then. Of course, he had some other protocols. So I was attached to him then. Then we continued, I would travel with him, he would go to minister for men of God. I remember, you know, traveling with him all the way down to Ilori, going back to Ilori where I came from. We went to minister for Reverend George Adeboye, um, we went to minister for Reverend Victor Adeyemi, who are spiritual grandparents, you know, and I was just intrigued by following him everywhere. And then it got to a point, you know, we're so close that he looked at me one day and said, you know what? I think you should come to America with me. And my man like, yes, America, let's go there. You know, and then we found a school, um, D.L. Modi, you know, and I was supposed to enroll in that school. He had even paid for the fees. And one day while I was in his hotel room, this was at Maryland. It was in a room. I was in the other room. So he calls me, calls my name, says, Shola. So I went there and I, I opened the door and then I saw him on the bed and he looked at me and said, he said, I don't think we should go ahead with this traveling thing again. Okay? He said, I, I just feel we shouldn't go ahead with this. I feel like God has a plan for you in Nigeria. And he said this to me. He said, by the time you are coming to, to America, you're going to come as a king. Don't worry about it. Of course, you know, I said, okay, that's fine. And that's how the whole America plan, you know, got dissolved right there. So at this time, God has helped us to do so many mighty things with the word on campus. And then it was time for me to move back to Lagos. So this very day, I decided that I was going to go back to Lagos, pack my things. I'm done with OAU and all the great work that God helps us to do through the word. And I remember that, you know, I got into the bus and I said to myself, I'm coming to Lagos. And then on the way down, I had cold feet. It was just like, how do I go to Lagos to a place that is unknown to me, even though I lived in Lagos all my life, but it was the fear of the unknown, the fear of conquering another territory. 
And I remember that I, you know, on, inside the bus, we got to Ibadan. And then all of a sudden I told the driver, driver, please, I want to come down. <laughs> and so I, I came down from the bus, packed my things, you know, and crossed to the other side and took another bus back to Ife, <laughs> you know. And that was very funny thinking about it now. Then it wasn't funny because I just thought to myself, it's safer with what I have known versus what, you know, I need to know. And um, I got back to Ife. And I think I was back in Ife for another one or two months with the word. And then I summoned the courage finally to head back to Lagos. And then I got to Lagos. And it was, it was amazing getting back to Lagos. I went back home. A very interesting day, which is where my life changed. <laughs> um, my father, Dr. K, you know, I've been serving him all these years. And then one day, you know, I was in church, the midweek service on a Wednesday. He called me off the, you know, off the blues and he said, you know, um, God told him that he should start a new line of church. In 2017, God gave us a miraculous uh, building, or should I say facility in Chicago, or the present uh, location of the headquarter of King Sword Ministries International. Globally, we call it the Apostolic Place. After the, the place was supernaturally given to us, we literally paid close to nothing in acquiring the facility. I was in, a, in the mode of gratitude, thanking God for this supernatural provision. And while I was doing that, the Lord spoke to me. He said, do you know you got this building, you got this facility because the previous owner lost a generation. And he said to me, he said, you've been in ministry for over 20 years and a new generation has risen. Say, I will need you to go back to Nigeria where it all started and start a movement, a movement that will be very intentional in reaching the young generation. And I can remember the Lord speaking to me. He said, so that you will not turn apostles into ushers and turn prophets into choir members. He said, create a, a platform for them to find expression so that they can thrive. It's, and back to what I was saying about the facility, he said the, the previous owner of the facility lost the facility because they lost a the generation. He said, you need to pay attention to the new generation so that they will walk into the fullness of what God has called them to do as far as the ministry is concerned. So the new was created to accommodate a generation intentionally, to give them a voice, to give them expression, to allow them to release their creativity in the uniqueness and the context of their generation. There were many things I didn't understand. For the most part, I watched things unfold to see where things were going and what God was doing. In fact, when he first said the name, the new, uh, my first thoughts were, even though I didn't tell him this, my first thoughts were, okay, are we then the old? Um, but when he identified the person that would be leading the movement, um, because I personally have a fondness for him. Um, I think it's kind of, you know, maybe it helped to start getting things clearer for me. Um, but for the most part, it, it was a journey. It was a journey of just seeing um, this thing that seemed like a mystery. And I believe it's a mystery, was a mystery in the heart of God. To see this thing come out of another ministry that's been in existence for so many years, come out, get established, and have these two expressions continue to grow, continue to be driven by vision. In the encounter that I had with God regarding uh, the new movement, how we should create a platform, an opportunity for a generation to find expression in the context of raise me a supernatural army, which is the vision God gave me in 1990 for the ministry. Uh, I had an encounter, in that, in, inside that same encounter, I, I saw Olushala Okodua, my son in the gospel, who has been in Kingsford for, for since college days in, in, in university. I saw him and the Lord spoke to me, he said, he is the one that we championed that movement. <laughs> I remember very vividly, you know, um, I almost gave a bombastic side eye. <laughs> it was like, what? They said to me that what God did with a particular church, you know, many years ago, 
um, with the, you know, the Dr. Turner Rapper at the time, you know, was going to be exactly what God was going to do with, you know, this new church that God was going to ask me to plant through King's Word in King's Word. And I was like, okay, yeah, you go, I believe you, but I'm not going to do it. And that's how the conversation went. This was sometimes in July. And then we started talking. He would call me on the phone, you know, what's going on? When are you starting? You know, gather your team and all of those things. So, yeah. I remember when my husband told me about, you know, this new vision that Dr. K had. Um, I, at first, it didn't really mean much to me. I just felt, oh, it was just something that, you know, Dr. K wanted him to do as part of um, King's word, right? And I didn't have any, I mean, I didn't see it as a big deal. I just saw it as, oh, it was an opportunity for you to serve. And um, I mean, I was open to it. And I mean, that's, it's, I mean, for me, I felt like it was his assignment. So I was like, that's good. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Just serve and do what you've always done. I remember the first time that, you know, um, Pierce mentioned, you know, <laughs> the, the new to me, uh, was right in front of Carrie Center. I was sitting on the chair, called me and, you know, told me about what Dr. K had mentioned to him. And I remember thinking to myself, like, well, you're the one Dr. K called, <laughs> you know, not any other person. Um, and that that's because at that time, you, I, I mean, I didn't really like, we knew that something was up, but it felt like everyone was trying to run away from, you know, the front line, actually, at least for me, right? I knew that God was doing something in my generation at the time because I had a personal relationship with him. And, you know, I, I just knew that there was something God was doing. And with that insight, I said, okay, let's start praying, all right? And so I gathered 15 people, um, I, I, and supernaturally I met 15 of them, picked a couple of them, and I said, God has put this vision in Dr. K's heart, and I know that that's what God is saying in our time, in our generation. In my mind, I thought it was just going to be like a youth church, like a youth fellowship where we just gather people, pray, you know, worship and, you know, um, do do some small programs. Did you not even realize the, 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 the seriousness of what we're talking about? Maybe in his mind, he just thought of a, of a fellowship of young people. But I told Dr. K that I'm going to do it, but I don't want to be called a pastor. I don't want to, I don't want to have anything, you know, to do with pastoring or the title, Pastor Shola. You know, just call me Shola, that's okay, but I'm going to gather the people, we're going to do that. And we started experiences of growth in prayers. I remember that we moved from 15 to 30 people, and then thereabout we started moving. And then in October, um, we did the first walkathon um, where we carried, you know, you know, cars and we went on the street. I remember from Carry Center, we moved all the way down to ICM, Ikeja City Mall, and on t-shirts, we walked all the way down, we got people, and we were sharing invites to um, a stage play that we were going to do. Now, this stage play was called Scars, and it was in collaboration with The Word, The Word Dance Group, and The New. That was very supernatural. And so we did a program called Scars. We invited people for this program called Scars. And it was in October we did a program, and it was amazing. We had, I think, in that program, over 250 people. Now, guess what? The people who came for that program, because the outreach we did by doing the walkathon was what we used to invite people for this program. The people who then decided to join the church, I remember there was somebody in the choir, she's still in the choir till today, who joined the church by the invitation that she got while we're having the walkathon, you know, um, you know, for the SCARS program. And guess what? She eventually became the head of the choir at the time. It was so supernatural. You know, so much, so many testimonies like that. And that's how, you know, we had our first program. People loved it. It was very emotional. People cried. It was powerful. But then we're waiting. When is the church going to start? So people were asking, when is the church going to start? When is the church going to start? So I had a cold feet. I was like, ah, I don't want to do this thing. No, this is looking very intense and then i remember that dr k called me and said december 15 we are going to be having supernatural and you are going to be ordained to the ministry so you're going to have to tell me three other pastors two other pastors who are going to be pastoring with you i told him there will be an ordination initially he kept quiet he didn't say much i'm like no way no way no way i don't want to do this i told my wife about it and i literally was believing god that dr k was going to change his mind <laughs> that we would never be pastors my husband was having like a bit of cold feet 
But I knew in my spirit that it was what God wanted him to do, right? And I'm sure he knew, but I think he just was, he just didn't like the fact that he was going to be ordained a pastor. They want to uh, ordain him. I say ordain as what? Did you go to Bible school? You, don't, you didn't go. So ordained for what? I was surprised, to be honest, when I heard he was going to be ordained as a pastor. On the day of the ordination, um, you know, I'd worn my suit and I went to the to the lounge where Dr. K was and I went to kneel before him. I said, sir, please, if it's possible, let this cup pass over me. I don't want to be a pastor. I can do this work, but that title, I don't want it. And that ordination, I don't want it. And I'm like, I'm closing my eyes. Before I open it, you need to be out of this place. So... To a large extent, I ordain him against his will. Let no man despise your youth. But be thou an example in what? In knowledge, in zeal, in service, and in grace. May the grace that I have carried for the last 27 years be released over you in raising, in discipling, in teaching and impacting a whole new generation. Your creativity will match with the auction to raise as we effectively, dynamically and supernaturally Become a voice that cannot be silenced, a challenge of blessing to a whole new generation in the name of Jesus. My husband and I got married about two months after I got ordained as a pastor, right? And I did for me, I didn't think there was anything to balance because for me, how I saw it initially was he was the one who was the pastor. I was just his wife. One thing that I needed to adjust to was being more open to more people because as a pastor or as a pastor's wife, then um, people will always come around, people will want to come around. My husband is also very open as well. He likes people around, but I am the exact opposite of my husband. I like my space. Yes, people should come, but then after a while, I mean, we need. I need my space, right? So one of the things I had to adjust to was being more accommodating. I remember um, someone made a comment at the time that when immediately after that service was over, that I would leave the front seat and probably go to the back or I would not just be in the radar. There was a time we had service and we, I think it was a uh, conversation on stage in church. It was a Sunday service and my husband was seated on the stage and then I was just sitting down on the pew like everyone else and um, he called me to come on stage and I looked at him and I said, you better don't try it. <laughs> It was so funny because I'm like, but I, I, I didn't stand up. We're pretty much just thrown into this new lifestyle. <laughs> I got a day into ministry. The church was inaugurated, um, that's the new was inaugurated on the 15th of December, 2017. Now, what do you expect? When you inaugurate a church, the next Sunday, the church will start, right? Well, news flash, the church didn't start. Why? because I had cold feet again. So guess what? We inaugurated the church and everybody that came to church was expecting Sunday service the next Sunday. And I was like, no way. I'm not doing service. <laughs> and so we didn't have service. We didn't have service that week, the next week, the second week, <laughs> because I was just worried. Like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen with me and all of these people? <laughs> you know? And um, I remember that Dr. K called me in America. He was in America then and said, Shola, I give you a deadline. That church must start. Da, 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 da. Anyway, I summoned all the courage that I could summon from the word and from belief. You know, we had our very first service January 18th, 2018 at the Kyrie Center. And so our service started 11 o'clock. I remember very vividly the theme of the service was called All Things New. Now, let me tell you another backstory. 
that day, the 17th, was the first time I was going to be preaching a sermon to a people like that. Of course, I've done that previously to a group of people, but to a large audience of people, I remember that night I couldn't sleep. I write my sermon notes, I'll cancel. I'll, <laughs> I remember I was doing dress rehearsals. <laughs> and I'll be walking around the stage. In the beginning was the word. The word was with, oh my God, what am I going to say here? Like, I was literally rehearsing to preach. And it was a very long night. I think that's about the longest night of my life. You know, getting ready for the sermon. I picked my suit, got ready. I remember I wore a blue suit and a blue and a red tie. You know, I tried to, you know, I still tried to drip even though I was anxious. So when that word comes to you, it activates every area of your life that has been deactivated. It costs to quicken every area that has had slow speed. It costs to move faster every area that has been crawling because the word of God is what? Is quick. And then we had the first service. Now, nobody told me that in your first service, when you're inaugurating the church, at least the first ch church service, your family members will come, your friends will come, all your enemies will come, everybody would come. And so you were, I was excited. I remember I got on stage and I saw, I think the first service was about 180 something people. I was like, yes, I'm anointed. Because <laughs> I saw the crowd of people, you know, I was like, yeah, we did it. So I was very excited. It gave us a positive energy. Next Sunday, I just expected that yeah, we're going to have a large crowd again. It's just going to grow, keep growing, keep growing. And guess what? News flash. The next Sunday, I did not know that everyone who came for your first service to support you were going to go back to their churches or come and find out if you're a pastor for them or not. <laughs> and guess what? Our attendance dropped from 180 something of the first service. I think it dropped all the way down to maybe like 70 something or 80 something and all of that. I was like, oh my God. I felt so discouraged. There was a day we came back from church. I think it was the fourth Sunday. And of course, at the time, my attendance wasn't really great. So, you know, our finances wasn't great. You know, I had this one white shirt I was always wearing because I, <laughs> I didn't have another shirt. I sat in the car and I reclined the chair and I was like this for about 30 minutes, just thinking that God, just help us. Help us on this journey. You know, it was such an emotional moment. And I think I cried and I closed my, cleaned my eyes and went back home inside the house. I said, let's go again. Um, we had so many challenges. I remember that, you know, um, we had challenges with finances. Every one of us then, I remember, I'm not sure, you know, when the new first started, when we're praying, the 15 of us, I was the only one who had a car at the time. And when we even started the church, I think it was just about two, three of us that had a car. So it, it, it wasn't even... The finances wasn't great as a church. We couldn't even do any major thing that we wanted to do. Um, getting people to come to church, you know, people just didn't even believe quickly in what we're doing. It was it was very difficult. We used to start our service by 11 o'clock. And so Kingswood would run their own service from 8 o'clock to 11 sometimes. Um, and sometimes we would not even start for 11 because we had to change the set. We had to change a lot of things. And there's so many discouragement that came. Sometimes we won't start our service until like 11.15, 11.30 and all of that. You know, and there's, there's this particular Sunday, the drummer did not come. <laughs> the drummer did not come. It was like they were rotating. Another Sunday, the keyboardist would not come. It was just, it was just funny um, and all of that. There was this particular Sunday. Please don't tell anybody this one. I'll tell you. I prepared my sermon note and lo and behold, I got to church and I forgot my sermon notes in church. <laughs> at home, pardon me. I forgot my sermon note at home and I was just like, how am I going to do this? It, it was so challenging. There were people who had welfare needs that we couldn't meet. Thanks be to God for the grace and the growth. And I remember there was this particular day um, I was at home and the Lord said to me, you know, I, we should do a particular style of um of service called Oriki. And I remember I'd called Pastor Ladi. I said, Pastor Ladi, God just spoke to me. This was on a Thursday. I said, on Sunday, we're going to do a service, a special service called Oriki. So we put the flyers together. Oriki was probably our first big break in terms of attendance. You know, we had a lot of people come and they were like, wow, what's this uniqueness? You know, some people actually got to stay. And I think that Oriki actually was one of the first things that marked something in my mind. We had Oriki service. And that Sunday, I remember where you know, um, taking the details of our first timers and we counted 80 people. I mean, I can remember it like it's yesterday because it actually marked my mind. I walked in 
I walked out. You know why? Because I saw the crowd. It was like the wind of the Spirit went to call people from everywhere. I was like, wait, is this the new service or King's Word service? He so said it was the new. And that was the first time we broke attendance to a whole new level. And that's how we started to grow and we started to do amazing big things as a church. So one year after we planted the new Ikeja, the Lord laid in our heart to go plant the new Lekki. Now it's called the new island. In this journal, I've got the first words that were spoken over the new Lekki. So there were prophecies that came through. So some of the words for Lekki Church was, God will build his church brick by brick. Um, there will be an explosion. I'm just reading a few. So there will be an explosion in everyone's lives in Lekki in a matter of weeks, which actually happened. Yeah, um, audacity of faith in the key church will be real. So that word audacity, when we we're doing audacity with PS, came a long time ago. Then um, there, there's one about lucky church is an answer and change to the darkest places. We are to light up darkness. There's dynamic wonders happening all over the place, giving glory to God. This was where this was the first few prophecies. Then we started prayers with PS. So every Saturday we'd have prayers. Then I think that's where a lot of that bond came in. And I really like that because that the new bond started to grow from that place. Yeah. We also did, we also, some of the prayers that we did, we would have people face the north, face the south, face the east, face yeah. the west, call people, call names. Oh, it was, awesome. it was, you know, it was really great. And after we planted the new island, we then planted the other the new churches by the mercies and the power of God's spirit. And so now we have the new Ikeja, we have the new island, we have the new Ibadan, we have the new Akure, we have the new Iyaba, we have the new Ife, we have the new Moro, and we just had a new one, which is the new United Kingdom. Coming to the UK, we were planning to uh, come to the UK. In our mind, we actually thought um, do a couple of people or set of people that's going to pass the new in the United Kingdom. So um, our expectation was not even set that we were going to be the ones to pastor the church. So we didn't have that expectation. Um, we just thought that whoever is going to be here, we just want to come and support, help the ministry, do what we can and support them, right? So when PS told me um, we we're going to pastor the church, <laughs> <laughs> if God has been able to do this for us in the past five years, then you can imagine what the next five years old. And the Lord said that what we've just done in the past five years is warm up and preparation for the many mighty things that is about to do. I'm looking at us when we started, just 15 of us, and looking at the new now. Gosh, it defies every form of human reasoning. You know, in five years, what we have achieved, what God has achieved through us is mind blowing. It's not, it's, it, you can't get that anywhere, right? It defies every form of church growth, every form of, you know, human reasoning that there can be, right? Um, looking at how, um, 15 of us will pray and now we have thousands of people. I call it from sea to sequoia, right? Just a few people. We're just like seedlings, right? And how right now the new has reached and impacted thousands of lives, thousands of people. It's really mind blowing. If in six years the Lord has done so much for us, now propel to the next, to the seventh, to the eighth, to the ninth, to the tenth year, and imagine how much God will have pulled us, propelled us, you know, so much more than we currently are, and really. It's truly really humbling. It's truly really amazing. Pierce will come in. He says, "Hey, I want to share something with you." And he's like, and I'm looking at him like he thinks I'm listening. I'm not listening. <laughs> I'm actually like, ah, ah. How does somebody think like? Where did he get all these? Like, we barely even finished one. 
And then he's moving on to the next thing. Okay, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. I want to do this. You know, I want it to be this. I want it to be wow. And I'm like, ah. The growth has been phenomenal. And it always, it stuns me every time. It stuns me. I mean, when you hear experiences of people who joined the new, how they joined the new, and people even when they when they talk about their the new story, the experience. You get in contact with people, people talking about how they dreamt about the new, they just saw the new. I mean the basic fire of evangelism where people just tell their friends about the new and it just seems like there's a grace of attraction upon the church. I was already a part of the church and um, I knew deep down in my heart that my heart was calling for something much more than where I was back then. So one morning I actually dressed up in my room planning to go to a church and uh, something just flashed in my heart and I got I saw two colors which is yellow and black. I don't know if there's a new anywhere. After that kind of experience, the name kind of dropped the new. And I had to go on Instagram immediately. I punched it in there by the leading of the Spirit of God. And I saw that uh, address, Grandeur Event Center. And I had always uh, driven through that end of uh, Billings Way. So I had to just put it on, on the Bolt app and I ordered my ride. And that was how I found myself uh, at the new at Grandeur Event Center. And I told God something that they did that in my heart. I said, if this is the place you want me to be, since my heart is yearning for something much more deeper than just the peripheral thing, uh, you will allow me to have a one-on-one -on -one contact with the lead man of this house. And after the service, I was outside, I was holding my jacket, and boom, Pastor Shola walked up to me. And he greeted me and he said, you are new here, right? I said, yes, it's my first time. He just said, okay, when you come back next week, make sure you come and see me. The first service in the new was the crossover, right? And my best friend, now fiancé, invited me to church. So he invited me and I was like, okay, I don't have anything I'm doing. So I came and it was really like impactful. I think that's the word for me. It was like, oh wow, this is different. Like everyone was just very, you know, gassed and it's like, what's going on here? Um, and then he invited me for like the, I think it was a Saturday. And then the Sunday, you had, we had to come like the evening to church. So I was like, let me come. And I remember getting home and praying, right? Just, you know, based on what um, was said during the crossover, because I got some confirmations and um, I got a verse, right? And I was like, okay, I don't like it was, it was not related to anything I was praying about. So it, at that point, it didn't make sense. It's like from A to Z, like what's, what's the correlation? Um, but then the first service, right? after the crossover ps literally used the like the scripture to preach and it was exactly what the holy spirit had actually like you know talked to me about so after service i remember going to ps and i'm like god bless you so much like i just got a confirmation that this is my church i just had this itch for for something i couldn't really place my fingers on and i spoke to a lot of people that were at the local assembly i was serving at that time that you know i don't know i just feel like i need to change my church I think that was the thing that I kept saying and they kept asking me why and I'm like I don't know why I just feel like I need something else or something more and so I went back to the new one right on the morning and um, getting there I think yes that was my first um, that was my first time witnessing the service the worship the word and all of that and it just felt really really in sync I, like I said, I was moved by you know, a lot of young people, you know, really, really passionate about God, praying, the worship, the word. I, I just couldn't really place my fingers, but I'm like, I think I have found my church. I got to a point in my life, right, where I knew that, you know, I had expended my own energy. Like, you know, where you're at that point where you feel like, oh, well, my power no fee carry this my life. So like, you don't, you don't, tr you don't calculate and plan and everything, but then, uh, it gets to that point where you you know that definitely for you to get to wherever you're trying to get to, you need God. So at that point, you're like, oh, my, see, Jesus, just, you know, take the wheel. And I, I think at that point was where I then became much more, you know, serious and then I joined properly. And um, ever since then, it's been more, um, you know, taking steps, you know, based off of understanding of God's word and God's will and also knowing my own place in God's plan and God's agenda and then walking in line. I walked into church. I saw this 
amazingly beautiful woman just standing like on stage holding the mic wearing this adure and ashoke mixed dress and she was blasting tongues and i'm like who is this person and i was just glued to her like i don't think i prayed i think i was just looking at the beauty of the woman and like i didn't understand like how can someone be so fine and so fierce and i wanted like i coveted it so much that day the new may have started as a church but it is not just a church the new is a move of god coming to the new i was just playing church and religion because i didn't really know or understand what koinonia means or you know actually having a relationship with god and that's what um the new has helped me in terms of my spiritual growth my financial growth business wise and career wise so it's it's more like an exponential overall growth for me as a person. The new is is really God's rescue mission for a generation. You don't have to trade spirituality for authenticity, you know. And I think that the new has been sent in this generation to really embody that, right? To re represent God, you know, to a generation. To represent the multifaceted God to a generation. You know how God can be so many things all at the same same time without you know his core nature you know being um affected we have postcards of signs and wonders everywhere that we go to we ensure that people experience god the way that we have experienced god i was what i would like to call a yo-yo christian in the sense that you know, today i'll be hot tomorrow i'll be cold and i knew that that wasn't really a good space to be in and you know coming to the new i saw a lot of people who were really hungry for God and that really resonated with me because there were certain things um, I had in my heart and the new just resonated with that at that point in my life. And the new is also a creative church. We don't do things the normal way. We do things, you know, creatively. We do things, it must be new and it must be big. And we have the audacity to chase the things that God has placed on our hearts. You can literally see people join the church having nothing, being sad, being depressed. And you can see that transition in their lives where, you know, they move from like ground zero and then they get propelled onto something big, something new. I saw people having global careers. I saw people having global voices, you know, just within a few months couple of years attending the new and all that and for me I knew that there's something right here even in my personal life uh, I remember a few months after I joined I, I think that's when I got a big promotion that I had been talking to my boss about I had to, and he said oh he has heard he had heard and all that and then a few months after you know I got first promotion I said okay and then a few months down the line got another promotion and I started to think to myself, and I would be a fool to think that, oh, it's because of my efforts and what I'm doing and who oh, I'm that good and all that. I knew there was a force. There was definitely a force behind me. I am no longer scared to knock on some doors, you know, so when some doors open for me, I am not scared to walk in. You know, I'm not scared to have some imaginations. I'm not scared to make some demands because I have seen that it is possible. You know, God was able to do this with, you know, a people who are willing. It's definitely, you know, the new is not even the church in the sense of it. It's the people. So as uh, the new is advancing, as the main is, you know, doing great things, of course, the people who are plugged into it also have to be partakers of those things. So that new mindset change, that transformation that has happened in my mind is something that I would not trade for anything in the world. When I joined the new, um, Prior to that time, I was a copper and I was earning about 60,000 naira, right? Immediately I joined the new, not quite long after I joined the new, I actually got a gig that, you know, was earning me way more than I was earning. So financially, I just sort of went up. You see people um, that you met at so and so level of their lives, and as a result of staying in touch and just exposing themselves to the teachings, exposing themselves to the communities, exposing themselves to the practices and the doctrines of the house. Um, walking in love, being led by God, uh, building healthy relationships. I'm, I'm kind of like that person that I, if you greet me, I'll greet you. But after that, it's just I just want to be by myself. But it's just been fascinating to see people that are genuinely like interested in you, the spiritual growth, the physical growth, like 
the community that you have. I've gained friends, I've gained families, I've gained people that are genuinely interested in my growth as well. That you know, they're not just you know, we're a church. If we go like this, you go. They're genuinely interested in seeing your life progress. So it's, it's been amazing. And seeing them transit from that place to where it is evident that there's growth and multiplication. Spiritually, I was burnt out. Like I was literally tired. I felt I was just, you know, going to church just to fulfill the purpose of doing that. And it was quite draining. So joining the news, something that actually pulled me or attracted me was the word. Before 20, before 20, say 2021, right? I mean, I had a Bible. I never, I never used to read it. Um, I never had that structured prayer life. I never also used to speak in tongues. So I'm, I'm, that, I'm one of those people that, you know, when they say, oh, that's speaking in the spirit, you're yeah, wondering what to say, right? Because it's just, you're just wondering, I, you, should you just mumble, you know, words together and just start speaking and stuff like that. But I actually, you know, um, had an, an encounter, right, um, with the Holy Spirit that was, on the 25th of May. I just, you know, started walking around my room, you know, said a prayer and, you know, it just started. And before you knew it, it was just like the Holy Spirit took over my utterance, you know. And it was just amazing to see, right? At that point, I was just like, wow. I mean, it was just like, more like the Holy Spirit telling me that, oh, this is what I can do with you and do through you. I've been with the new since day one and my experience so far has been amazing. Uh, they helped me, um, from my spiritual relationship with God. The early days when we used to spend some time to pray and hearing Pastor Shola speak, he spoke to something in my heart. He spoke to the depths of me. That scripture that says deep calls unto deep. I felt that roar again. And I knew that there was something for me in this place. Why I still come to the new today? Because of the word. Yeah. The word, because of the word, when I I come there often, because I enjoy when Pastor Sholas preach. You know, I'm just I'm carried away because they go deep into the word. They bring out the understanding of the word. They they in fact they pieces the Bible. They make you understand and even make you love the Bible more. So you will you will be carried away. You will leave when you finish from the service. You go back to your Bible and go through it and you you discover that you are very much aligned with your script with the scripture and what the scripture is the light whoever is in the light will never fall can never fall in darkness 2018 i was staying in Badagri. yeah i was staying in Badagri. so i'll come all the way from Badagri to the church you know uh pray you know hear the word and so i don't always like to miss the word to be honest because uh it kind of helped me then the new is not a church so community if you go church. there and say i'm going to church i'm going to church no it's a community that's it that communal living love is there is there you know i remember when i lost my brother um and then yes okay uh, ps came to visit and all that ps came for the burial and i remember how he kept on calling and checking and asking i remember and i'm like okay it's enough now like okay you you visited me, you asked how I am, you, you know, come for the burial and all, but he made it a point of duty to keep on, you know, asking and checking and saying, how are you doing? How are you holding up and all that? And really that hit something uh, deep within me. That hit some, it, it showed me that, oh, I wasn't just a number. If they don't see you, they'll call you on phone. Ah, where are you? What is happening to you? They want, they, they, they care, they care, they care. I've gone to church, I've gone to other places where even if they don't see you, they don't ask about you. But those people, they, they, they show love. When I see them like this, or when I go to the church, after I dance, I hear the, the word of God. That love, that love, that community love is there. People in the new are the most thoughtful and great people that I've ever met. Um, what gathers us together is the love and the love of God. And it's just an amazing experience every time when you walk in to the church. 
I had an I had an operation uh 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 general hospital. Yeah. I can tell you that without me being neighbor, it was one of the pastors in the new that paid the bill. That's the kind of love. Just uh, ventured into a business, a gadget business. And then uh, I started telling people in church, you know, about the about the business. So me, for me as a business person, uh, one, thing, one thing I've always understood about uh, business is for you to thrive as a business person. You know, you need a community of people. You need like a tribe. So it was one of the things that actually helped me then, you know. How love is shared abroad, you know, amongst us. It's it's beautiful. The new has given me um, a new pedestal. The new has given me an opportunity to serve, an opportunity to meet people, you know, an opportunity to thrive, really, an opportunity to become a better person, an opportunity to see beyond whatever dream it was that I had of my life. Literally, maybe seven years ago, the new has transformed me, has changed me so much. The new is not just a church. It's an identity, which is why I believe there are so many people that you might not be able to say, oh, the new is this, but you just know, I'm the new, you know, you just, there's just that sense of newness and freshness and, you know, um, there's just, there's just that, there's just that thing, <laughs> for lack of a better word, you know. What we have seen so far, it's nothing compared to what we will see. And I'm sure we feel it. There's a way you sense in your heart that what God has in store is just so much more than what we've seen. And all we've seen is the, ice, the tip of the iceberg. I want to thank every member of the team, whether you just joined or you've been there from the beginning of your life. King's World and Jesus. We transisted to, 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 to the new. Listen, young, old, whatever level you are in, in the new. I want you to see yourself as a child of prophecy and that God's hand is upon you to fulfill a major prophecy in your generation. And I see you finding expression, not just on the pulpit on Sunday morning, but Monday through Saturday, I see people that will literally live in the fulfillment of Daniel chapter 1 verse 20. The Bible says disabled boys were 10 times better. You'll be 10 times better in your space. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and wonders. So I'm expecting amazing, mind-blowing, impactful results through the new movement. So I'm excited where the future is concerned and I'm looking forward to see the harvest every day. God is moving in our times and is looking for people like you and I, a set of people who's going to use to permeate the will of God upon the earth. And that's the kind of people that are members of this army, this great supernatural army. People who are the rejects of stone have now become the chief cornerstone. The people who are tired of mere religion without change but want to see that God is glorified in their lifetime on the earth. A group of people who never knew their path, but by the grace and the mercy of God found their way. The people who thought and thought to themselves they would be nobody, but then God by his mighty hand has made them to become somebody. These are the kinds of people that come to this supernatural army, a people of the word, a people that are yielded to the spirit, a people that are committed to God's purpose for their life. If you are part of this army, with the thousands of people that I see in my spirit and millions of people that I see in my spirit, I say to you, the journey begins for this great mighty work of God on the earth to flood the earth as we build a supernatural ark upon the face of the earth for this flood that is coming in. And we create this supernatural ark to keep the millions of people that will stay right in it as we journey together for God's purpose and God's will. You are the new, I am the new, and together we are going to raise a supernatural army. It's not just the new church, it's the new. Because under the new, it's a church, but there are many mighty expressions that God is going to bet through this assignment. I see schools, I see hospitals, I see thousands of people coming together in one location like a city built for God with millions of people. This is going to be a mighty move of God on the earth, not just in Nigeria, but across the earth. 
You know why I'm sure about this? Because all the things God showed me in the past five years, many of them have come to pass. Many of you are members of the new today. But guess what? Five years ago, we we're only just 15 of us. Think about that and look at what God has been able to do with our lives five years ago. And God is saying that the next chapter is going to be bigger. It's going to be greater. It's going to be mightier. There are many things God has put in my heart that I'm going to be sharing with us in the coming days. But look, guys, every corner of the earth, there will be a sound and that's going to be the new. Believe this prophecy that I'm about to say to you. One of the words that will be rampant the most in the lips of everyone in our generation that you and I believe belongs to is the word, the new, the new, the new. It's going to be the new in fashion. It's going to be the new in art entertainment. It's going to be the new in business. It's going to be the new in music. It's going to be the new in media. It's going to be the new in technology. It's going to be the new everywhere. You can as well put that down on the tablets of your heart. It's the new everywhere to the ends of the earth. One amongst us will be a thousand people. One amongst us will be a mighty nation. And this is the prophetic word the Lord gave me, Isaiah 8, 18. It says, I and the children that the Lord has given to us, we are for signs and wonders. Guys, we just only started. It's to the ends of the earth. The nations are coming and the nations are calling. And now is the time for that manifestation. By this time next year, get ready for new music. Get ready for movies from the new. Get ready for production. It's going to be a tsunami, a huge tornado that's going to sweep across the nations of the earth mightily. And so mightily will grow this word and it will surely prevail. It's the new to the ends of the earth. And that's why in the new, everything we do is always new. Don't forget this. It is the new everywhere. And get ready for that tsunami because it starts right now. And as the nation calls, the whole world will gather together in one voice with our right hands lifted up to heaven. And individually we'll declare this. I am the new and I have no taste for mere religion without change. I live a result oriented purpose-driven life based on principles in God's Word. I'm a man of the Word. I'm yielded to the Spirit and I'm committed to God's purpose for my life. I take my place in God's supernatural army and His agenda for the earth and my generation. I bring great joy to my city and as sure as God helps me, I will not give up. I will not cave in. I will not quit. I will not fail. I will not fear. And I will not die until my job is done and victory is won. I am the new and I love this church. It's from a seed to squire.